This is great. We've already had the Manhattan Project, recreational drugs, and thanks to Jim, the evolution of the transistor into the microprocessor. There's a lot of stuff coming up that I didn't anticipate tonight. I'm going to throw it open to yourselves for some open questions in a minute, but I've got one more fixed question to ask you. From what you've heard already, and from what you've heard from the panel, and what you brought to this evening, if we can get the next question up, if it's there. It should take a second. I'm sorry, this is as complicated. There are eight options here. It's a little bit complicated, but I promise there's no more than eight than this. You can only vote on one. You might think it's more than one, but just pick the one that you think. From what you've heard so far or what you felt before you got here is the major obstacle that we need to deal with. So treat that as an obstacle, treat that as an objection, treat that as a limitation. Safety and security, funding and economics, religious or ethical, apologies for lumping the two together, scientific and technical, regulation of research. Hey, I've got no concerns. None of the above for something else that we haven't thought of, or of course, quite legitimate, I don't know. And I appreciate that over half of you had voted before I'd even read those options, but you, you know. And once we've finished voting, can I get you to hold before you reveal the answer? Because I just want to get, I want to get the panel as well. I, want to, I just want to hear. I'll wait till we see if we can get past 90. There are a couple of latecomers. Did you have, are there people in the audience who don't have uh, little keypads? Yes, can we get keypads to the last couple of people who came in? Stick your hands up. There are elections coming up. We don't want to disenfranchise anybody. We're very democratic. Come on, we're looking for at least 90 of you. We know there's 90 of you voted before. Don't hold back. OK, so before we reveal, you can keep counting. Can I just ask each of the panel, if you had to vote on this, now that everyone has voted, what would it, I know it's invidious to force you to pick one, but what would you pick, Jim? Well, for me, it's easy. It's the scientific and technical issues. And that's not just because that's what we struggle with on a daily basis. But a lot of these issues, um, like, for example, regulation and the like, are already dealt with with um, existing technologies. So we've got existing regulations that deal with a lot of these, and you can see them moving forward for any new risks in a reasonable, reasonably straightforward way. And I think that's the technical issue. Richard? Um, I went for the first one, safety and security, in, in the kind of broadest sense, that, that we do this in a way um, that is something that will enhance um, the, the human and the, nat you know, the, the planet. Um, it will be done safely and will not get into the hands of um, uh, mad people. Mad people. Mm. Nicely put. Joyce? <laughs> well, I went for regulation of research as the major obstacle, but related to safety and security, because we do need safety and security, but the way we choose to regulate will make a big difference, A, to how safe it is, but B, to what gets developed uh, in the first place. And we need to do it better. I don't agree with Jim that we've done it very well in the past. I do think we need to improve on what we've done in the past. And some of the precedents that we could choose for something like biology would be very unfortunate indeed. OK, three panellists, three different answers. Ben? Yeah, I'm, I'm different. I, I went for regulation of research, not in the sense that there's a threat, but I think, as I was saying, I think we need to think about how society engages with science, how we conduct regulation of research, or we don't. And to even start that debate, because we don't even discuss it. So for me, that's, that's a major obstacle in all science, not just synthetic biology. Right, so you're, you voted the same as Joyce, but for different reasons. Yes. Yeah. Good, that makes it nice and clear. OK, can we actually reveal what the audience found here? Scientific and technical is our big, is our big leader, so 32%. But, but the stuff pretty much across the board, nobody went for none of the above. That was very kind of you. Uh, so as you can, you can see, so a reasonable split across there, all the different aspects. So... Now I think would be a good time. I've got lots of questions of mine, and I can go to them, but I think it's nice to see if there's any of these you'd like to ask about. We've got roving microphones. Because we're a little bit short of time tonight, uh, can we just cut the kind of delay before the first question, which usually happens at least? That's very good. We'll go to the gentleman in the front row here. Can we get a microphone? Who is it? Siobhan, come on down. <laughs> is it just you with the one mic? Oh, good, that's fine. Uh, you, is this working? Hello? Yeah. Uh, you mentioned uh, newspapers, or newspapers were mentioned, and as a, I don't know about many, many others, but a good Guardian reader, I was very struck by uh, the piece, the bad science piece this weekend, was it this weekend, from Ben Goldacre, where he spoke about the commercial interests, not just the legal and regulation, but the, the um, copywriting of genomes, uh, or I don't know if I've got the exact terminology right, and that not being in the serving the public interest. 
and how significant that was. And just to, you know, because com the commercial stuff doesn't appear. Yeah, are there, are, 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 there, are there aspects of this? Because I mean, for those who, don't, who aren't familiar with this, this is the fact that already I think it's something like 20% of the human genome, correct me if I'm wrong, there are patents applying to it and there are concerns that actually some of the potential work we could be doing with that has been blocked, sometimes by little pa patents that were only meant to block a piece of work in one area, but it turns out you can't do work on all those other areas because it involves that patent. And obviously if you stop patenting biological building blocks, it would have the same kind of effects, wouldn't it, Ben? No. I think the, the whole issue of patents is incredibly important. We, we patent our stuff, but primarily be, because most of the people you might engage with in order to have preclinical trials and clinical trials require a patent so they can see some form of reward. But from a personal point of view, I think the idea that we patent gene sequences is absolutely abhor abhorrent, and it's completely within our control, societal control, to determine how patents limit our lives. Governments can challenge patents. They can decide not to uphold them, and I think over the next 10 to 15 years, the idea that Craig Venter can own a chunk of the human genome will be challenged, and it will be overruled. And so I have faith, perhaps naively, in society to change the rules and the patent laws that we just don't like. You know, what are people going to do? Sue people for having human genes? I don't, I don't think so. We have, to, we have to challenge the things that we think are wrong. And the most of the time, we just leave that to so-called experts. They may be experts of law, but not necessarily of science. So. But, but I think an, an even bigger danger in this is the, the effect of the market on this, because it seems to me that the global market is the biggest destabilizer of human good on the planet at the moment. And once this gets into the profit realm, um, you get drug companies that have an interest in pushing their drugs to make a profit and not necessarily for wise uses. Uh, there is an overuse of drugs almost everywhere. Uh, they're drugging children by the, by the thousand in America with Ritalin because, you know, because they're they do what kids do. Um, and there is a sense in which Big Pharma, I think, is one of the big bad guys on the planet. Um, and if, if the market is as dominant as I think it is increasingly being, then I think that this will be abused for profit reasons. And you've got these good, noble-minded scientists here who invent wonderful processes, which then become the object of the capitalist imperative. Jim, it sounds ridiculous because it sounds like if you go back to your bio block idea, it's like having a Lego set where you can't, you know, every time you have to use a roof tile, you'd have, you'd have to pay. It doesn't sound feasible, but yet there, there are people out there who are concerned this might happen. Well, I, I think I'd like to correct a, a certain assumption here in that, that the scientific community has been naive about this because as part of the discussions over the last 10 years, what's been an integral part of that is trying to adopt some kind of commercial model which will allow the investment that's required for any kind of successful industry to be built or scientific research to continue with this balance of allowing open access. And so there's this open source movement associated with synthetic biology on the constructive side of synthetic biology. Uh, because these building blocks are important to keep open and if they're closed uh, to wide use then they become less useful anyway. But the idea of trying to break down the current practices where uh, biotechnology companies generally use IP as a restrictive device to restrict competition, to protect their own profits and to garner investments, to try and break that down and to produce some kind of uh, arrangement which allows free access to the building blocks, yet allows investment and protection of applications. And the Biobricks Foundation, which is a, a cross, it's an international group of, of folk who are uh, investigating options and it's based as a foundation, it's a non-profit foundation, it's based uh, out of MIT in Boston and uh, is investigating and has drafts of proposals to try and improve that. But it, the field is highly poised at this point, and it's very easy to see the field slipping into the conventional um, anti-competitive mode where things are locked up versus uh, a more disruptive model where this kind of, this would change the way that uh, breeding and manipulation of living systems would be handled and it would allow better traffic of intellectual property and, and resources between first and third world as well. There's a very important issue which many of us feel very strongly about, but it's a very um, unresolved issue at this point.